And his response was that it looks like a plane. I'm like, I suppose, like one of those stealth fighters, like, you know, the wings and the front. Hello, and welcome to The Art of Pointy Things, a channel where I discuss my adventures in knitting, sewing, embroidery, and other similar crafts. I'm Dusty, and today I'm doing the ninth episode of my monthly knitting and general creating podcast, detailing what I've been making the last month since I saw you. It's only knitting this month. Um, I do want to get back into doing other things, but at the moment it's just knitting. So there's that. I've also actually been quite monogamous with my knitting, so most of this episode will be detailing like one thing. Um, but uh, I'm not wearing any knitwear today. I'm sorry. I just It is quite cold out, but I've just not really been wearing knitwear in the house. I am wearing a button-down shirt though. Fancy. So, on to finished objects. So, as I said, I actually have a finished object. I have been working on it very monogamous, monogamously for the last month. And it is my knitted sweater vest. So, this is a self-drafted pattern that I made using my body measurements and a gauge swatch. Um, and... Sorry, I just thought suddenly there's a weird crease there. I don't actually know what caused it because it's nowhere near where I would have sewn anything in. Ha! Huh. Um, I have to look into that. Uh, yes. So, as I said, I sort of designed what I wanted and then used my knowledge of actually sewing pattern drafting and the gauge swatch to come up with a pattern for this. Um, I... It was fun. There are some problems that didn't quite work out exactly how I intended. But in all honesty, I've only ever really done something a lot simpler than this before. Um, I didn't have to worry about necklines and armholes, and it's the armholes that cause the issue. Um, but I absolutely love wearing it. The reason I'm wearing a button-down shirt is I was taking pictures, and this goes very nicely over my button-down, my button shirts. Um, so as I said, I had a problem with the armholes. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, because I did, the ribbing has somewhat fixed it, but the armholes sagged massively. Um, the bottom of them, which were meant to be, you know, at, the, at my armholes, ended up sort of halfway down my bust line. Um, but the rest of the, sort of the seams seemed not too badly placed, so um, I think it might have been the weight of the fabric below it dragging it down. I also think that I do have a bit of excess fabric in the top, so I think I might have measured my top incorrectly, which does come back to the whole, when you measure your body, you should have somebody else do it. Um, rather than doing it yourself, I just, my, my boyfriend has no idea on these things and I don't really want to discuss it with anyone else. But when I put the ribbing on, I made sure to pick up more space stitches at the bottom. And what that means is that um, it sort of pulled it up a bit. <clears throat> oh, sorry, my voice just went there a bit. Alright, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I I'd put in a tighter... I measured my arm side, or my armhole, and figured out how many stitches, based on the ribbing I had at the bottom, I would need to get it, and then I only picked up that many stitches, which I think is how you're meant to do it anyway. Um, and I think that has helped with some of the stretching. It certainly looks a lot better when I wear it. Though the other issue that with the arm hop, with the arm length, I thought when I measured from where I wanted to, from the length of my shoulder, I thought I had accounted for the fact that I would have, you know, a couple of centimetres of ribbing. But I didn't. Where this sits is almost perfect for where I wanted it to sit, which means I should have made it a lot narrower and had the ribbing there. So the ribbing is a bit long. Um, and I had the same issue with the neck. You can see I've actually not done ribbing on the neck. So my initial plan was to have a ribbed neckline, sort of the same as this. Pick up the stitches along and knit a ribbed neckline. Um, I, after watching... <laughs> I was concerned because this is basically, as I said, this is almost the perfect size neckline for what I wanted, which, as I said, is wearing collared shirts and having the collar poking through the um, hole. But, you know, it sort of... I realised that if I had the ribbing, it would make it a lot smaller, the ribbing would sit weirdly on my neck, and it wasn't what I wanted, so I found out about I-cord edging, which is what I've done here. So it's an applied I-cord edging put in after the fact. It's not perfect, you can actually see it's a bit wobbly here where I think I might have picked up too close together. But I am so happy with how the neckline sits. Potentially a little small, but again, I think that's 
you know, I think I know why that is. That's just not necessarily mismeasuring or miss something wrong with my pattern so much as I didn't account for adding edging. I need to remember that the next time I do this is that I need to account for adding edging on. I thought I did with the shoulder, but evidently I didn't. Um, but I mean, otherwise it fits, it fits exactly in the body. It fits exactly how I wanted it to. It's potentially a little long, but I like my garments long. I can't imagine it being much shorter. Um, it's also covered in dog hair because I blocked it in a room and I closed the door, left it on the floor. And as you might me or may, may or not be aware, I have a white dog who decided that when my boyfriend left the door open, it made an excellent bed. So yes, my dog now thinks that this is her dog bed. It's not. She's not getting it back because I really like it. Um, but I can't blame her because it's really soft because the yarn I used is Holst Super Soft in the colour Vintage Heather. I bought a 500 gram cone of it. I do intend to measure how much I've got left and how much this weighs. Um, mainly just, just to see. I am always interested in how much yarn I use. Um, and it's it comes with the oil in, so when you knit it, it's not very soft, but then when you wash it and you block it, it is so beautifully soft. Um, and I've knit this on quite small needles, so I held the yarn double, and the body was knit on 3.75 millimeter needles, and then all of the edging, so the ribbing, the ribbing, the neckline, and the bottom ribbing were knit on 3.25 millimeter needles. Um, and I think that's, I think it looks quite good. As I said, I'm not a massive fan of how the shoulders look, but I know for next time. And that's, I think, is the main thing for this. The main reason I did this was I wanted to see, I've always considered knitting patterns sort of magic, black magic. And I wanted to see as if I put the way I think about patterns with, you know, I, I started with pattern drafting with sewing. If I put that logic towards, you know, could I get something that I liked? And the answer is yes, as long as I, you know, it might take a few more attempts at practice, um, and then I don't know what I do with sleeves because I can't even draft pa pattern sleeves half the time anyway. Let alone trying to figure out how I'd end up with um, good sleeves in knitting. But I think you know, for this sort of thing, I think it worked. Um, I probably should point out the body is seed stitch, so it's all moss stitch. I think it's also called, which is just almost offset ribbing. So it's knit pearl, but then. If you were ribbing, you would on in the in the in the round. If you were ribbing, you would then knit the previous knit stitch. Um, but in this, you purl the previous knit stitch. So you knit purl knit purl in the round. Um, it basically creates almost columns of offset garter. I mean, I could say all sorts of random things, but I don't think people understand them. But I'm really happy with this and how it looks. Um, I might have some photos on my Instagram, maybe, probably not, and maybe some in the Ravelry of it finished. I sort of have a short that I might release a bit, I'm not really sure. But it's a beautiful blue and I can see myself wearing it. As you see, like this shirt has the blue in it and it works really well. Probably should put the side because the sun's over there. <laughs> um, I think it works really well. Um, yeah. Um, I think that's it on this. It was great fun and I, as I said, I absolutely love it and I definitely want to try this sort of thing again. I do hope to potentially put out a video of the process I used to design this. Um, as I, you know, I'm not an expert in pattern drafting at all. I'm not sure the bottom, have I? Um, but it's just, you know, just I want to record how I did this, how I went through it, how my, I, I thought of my process. Not so much because this is going to be a, this is how to do it. It's definitely not going to be that, but more just sometimes it's interesting. At least I find it interesting to see other people's processes. So hopefully others find that. Um, I'm going to actually show off one of the interesting design features. Because of the nature of seed stitch, I was concerned with increases and decreases that they would be really obvious. So what I ended up doing was I have along the seams. Oh, wow. It's a lot less visible once it's been blocked. You can sort of see there is a row that was just just like one column of stockinette, one stitch of stockinette. 
and then the increase and decrease has happened either side of that. And A, that gave me a place that I, where I knew I, you know, I could easily mark where I was decreasing around. But also it sort of creates a bit of a visual gap that means you don't see the increases and decreases as much. And from the outside, yeah, you can sort of see the seam, which I think is also personally a really interesting detail. Um, you know, I, I don't mind in the round, but I do like the idea of just having a sort of seam. Um, I think it's created some really interesting visual visual points. Um, so I've got one, two under the arms. Did I just not? The... Two under the arms, one down the centre of the back, and then where the bust increases happen, the almost the bust seams. I must admit, this is, I mean, I, I love this sort of thing. It, lots of math, lots of fun things. So I'm really, really happy with that. Um, and I can't wait to get to wear it out. So yes, that is my only finished object. So we will go on to works in progress. Um, go this one. So this is my coziest memories blanket. Um, I am gonna actually enter this. this is, so if you don't know who Skeins of Dreams is, yes, Skeins of Dreams, she is a wonderful, another podcaster online, um, and she's doing a blanket make-along. And, I mean, I was going to make a blanket anyway, but I decided that I was going to join in. And this is where I am my blanket. So it's The Coziest Memory, as I said, by Kempler Ray. I think I may have missaid her name in the last episode. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know quite where I got her other name, the other name I said from, but... Um, and basically it's these mitered squares and then you just, there's no sewing together involved, which is why I really like the idea of this one, because it's just picking up edges and then using that to create your next square. Um, so I've not made a massive progress on this, I've just done a few extra squares. I can't remember, I think I've had four or five done the last video, so I've now got this many. Um, you may notice that there's a lot of cream and the plan for that so I've got all of these scrap yarns that I'm using. So, you know, I've got my hand dyed, the nettle and rhubarb one. I've got um, a very nice merino indie dyed one. And, you know, then there's my West Yorkshire spinners ones. And I'm looking over my corner. Um, and then, so that, because I know I would overthink the colours, I have ended up alternating all the squares with a cream. And the cream is just a woolly knit 100% British wool cream cone and my hope is that I'll um, inter alternate with the cream and that should create a bit more cohesion and I can worry a lot less about colour because you know I probably wouldn't have put this so close to that if I didn't have the cream around it because it's like oh but it doesn't really go and I just think that I would probably end up worrying about how it looked too much if I didn't do something like this. Um, I think I did mention that in the last video. So yes. Um, I'm also going to say that I showed this to my boyfriend because I was like, look at the progress I've made. And his response was that it looks like a plane. I'm like, I suppose, like one of those stealth fighters, like, you know, the wings and the front and... Yes, and you probably now understand why I make these videos because if I try to talk to my boyfriend about knitting, he sort of gets a bit weird. He's not really into it. So I like, I like to talk about what I make, so... I made these videos so I can talk about what I make. And I, you know, I, I love seeing other people talk about what they make. So, and please tell me in the comments what you're making and stuff. I, I really do enjoy it. Um, so, I mean, in all honesty, I'm probably not gonna show this every episode because, you know, it's just gonna be more and more squares. But I will hopefully remember to actually post progress pictures on Instagram and maybe Ravelry. Um, but yes, and then I'm going to count this next thing as a work in progress, even though this is all that exists of it. Um, so if you watch my projects I want to make in 2022, I listed the festive pullover, mm, sorry, the festive pullover by Ellie from Skein Day Knits. Um, it's a Christmas festive, that sort of season festive. It's not actually just Christmas. Some of the motifs are, you know, just generically wintry like these snowmen. Um, and it's either all over or yoked colour work jumper and I I want to make myself a Christmas jumper 
um, and I think it just, I, like, from the moment I saw it, I was like, yes, I want one. So, um, I put, I knitted a swatch because it's colour work, I thought I'd knit a swatch. Um, however, this swatch tells me nothing, which is why I've not really done much with it. You can see how much it's curling, I don't know if you can see how much it's puckered. It's, apart from knowing that I do like the red and cream together, and I think it will make a beautiful Christmas jumper, um, I don't really get much from this because it was really interesting for me going from the Hu Hua Tonga where I was working on the body and a big piece to working on the small piece and realise how, you know, I'm holding the yarn theoretically the same, you know, it's over the same fingers, it's it's knit the same way, but just the way I was, ten I just, on this smaller piece, I realised how differently I was tensioning and I think that's where the problems I had with the with it being so much bigger came from was that I did have that that issue which has left me in a bit of a state of you know I like the colours I you can see I did actually I was like I'm pretty certain I want the red with the white as the contrast but I was like I'll try the white with the red and I think actually no yeah the red with the white I think it's gonna look really good I tried one of the I tried some of the generic little ones and then the big one and I'm really happy and I'm definitely gonna use the snowman motif because I really like it but I, there's no point measuring this because the gauge that this is, is not going to be the gauge when I cast on however many stitches it is and knit it up. And I'm sort of at a bit of a loss on what to do. Because the only way I think I could get a good gauge is if I cast on the appropriate amount of stitches and knit the motif in those stitches because it's, it's just it's the difference between knitting something sort of magic loop or something like that or very small circumference versus knitting something on a bigger circumference and I probably sound absolutely crazy but it it I think it does create a difference and I've got this pocket fabric and I've not blocked this you can probably tell by the amount of curling but I don't think blocking's going to help. You can actually see part of the problem here, like you've got these three stitches, there's meant to be a fourth to create a diamond, but you just can't see it, and it's there. If I stretch there, you can see it. But then you get weirder puckering, and it's because I didn't have the right tension, and I was really struggling to keep the, flu the flutes loose. The floats loose in the back, and I think that's the problem. I think I was struggling with the small circumference. So, I just don't want to waste yarn in making a big swatch, it just feels. But at the same time, I think that if I really want this to fit well, I do have to get the swatch right. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. So I might cast this on next month. Um, I might have a bigger swatch if I decide to actually do that. Um, the yarn is Woolly Knits. Again, the 100% British wool. Uh, so you've got the cream again. It's a different comb, technically, so it might be a different dye lot. I don't think it is. I don't think they say what dye lots they are on them, but it's a diff it's technically a different comb. And then the red is the Cassett Red. Um, she had a few reds on the website, and I like this one. It's got a bit of depth to it, a bit more purpley, so a bit more like what I, what I like. Um, and, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to get this on, and I'm excited to start it. I just need to figure out what I'm doing and how I'm going to get how I'm going to get what I want and what looks good and what is technically correctly done. Um, I also, there's part of me that wants to do all over colour work, there's also part of me that doesn't want a shapeless body and wants to try and figure out if I can, even with all over colour work, like shape the body a bit to come in for the waist and then back out for the hips, but that's a pipe dream at the moment. I think the first thing I need to figure out is what needles, what size I'm knitting. And that needs, I think to be honest, I've come to the conclusion that that needs a proper gauge swatch. This is not gonna cut it. Um, so. Celabi. It's life, that's life. But I'm actually, as I said, I love the way the colors work together. I think it'll make a gorgeous Christmas jumper. Um, my vague hope is if I start it now, it might be finished by Christmas, especially if it's all over colour work. I might have it by Christmas this year, otherwise I can aim for Christmas next year. That is it for 
works in progress. Um, so if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. If you're enjoying yourself, then please consider leaving a like and a comment below and maybe subscribing. I put out a monthly knitting and sort of general creating podcast as well as I do some other videos. Um, so, you know, please stick around, check out my channel, see if you like it. And now we shall go on to acquisitions. I, in general, been trying to limit how much yarn I buy. I don't get through it as fast as I've been buying it. However, as I mentioned last time, um, excuse the crinkling for a second. I don't want to take it out of the package. Um, I, the, the hoo-ha tonga that I did was a sample knit for botanical yarn. So I got some store credit to spend. So this is what I got with the store credit because I don't like having money sitting around. Well, I do, but that sounded weird. I decided, I, she released a beautiful sort of purple thing, so I went for it. So this is her from her Crocus collection. This is the Crocus Corsicus. It's a purple and it's got these darker purple speckles in it and it is beautiful. And this is the DK weight. 75% merino, 25% nylon superwash. Um, so this is from her recent Crocus collection. Um, I think it's very pretty. I plan to make socks with this. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to make pattern socks. I think there's a. I think it's it's tonal enough that I could get away with a pattern sock. So I need to find a good DK weight pattern for this. I'm sort of tempted by the. Is it Woolly Witchcraft? Something like that. She reads the biscuit socks, and I think they would be really cute in. I mean, it's not a biscuit colour, but. Um, and then there is this, which is going to crinkle massively. I'm going to get some over. There you go. So, this is her Amethyst Fade set, which was released for. Was it the Virtual Yorkshire Yarn Fest? I can't remember, but she did something like that. Um, I think it's now a monthly thing and the theme is based on birthstones so you know keep an eye out for that I think there's a lot of people involved and I think it's very interesting um this goes from purple to black <laughs> the fact these ones are sort of fading with the background like I'm I this is a temporary I mean you might be noticed I've been sort of fiddling with different settings for each video and so this is just sort of like would this work as a background and I think the generic answer is no I don't think it's quite at the same time, I don't, I mean, apart from that, which was sort of blowing out a bit, it's not so bad now. I don't know. Anyway, so tell me what you think of the background, but you can see it's sort of fading in a bit. It's black to sort of blackish purple, more purple side of black. Um, Amethyst Fade. This is in fingering weight, she says, hopefully. Yes, I think it is. Um, 20 grams skeins, 10 of them. 75% merino wool, 25% nylon. So the standard sock weight. And this doesn't have a specific plan as of yet. However, it is going to be in a fade, in a yoked jumper, in a very similar way to the Huhua Tonga. Hopefully. Um, my main hope with that, I, I don't have a pattern in mind. I think there's loads of beautiful patterns out there. And every time I look for sort of colour work patterns, there's more and more beautiful ones. And I think this would go very nicely in in one of those. Um, I've not picked a specific pattern because I have so many specific patterns in mind. Like I've got a sock pattern for that. I've got a shawl pattern. I've got another jumper I want to make. I've got all these things, and my I get easily distracted and I get easily sort of taken in by new pretty things. So I'm thinking I'm keeping this, and I've got the idea of a faded color work jumper, and then the scraps knit into my scrappy blanket, um, and. I think that's a, you know, I'm just going to leave it at that, put it away. I'm leaving it in the package because I think it looks really pretty and also it stays in the right colour order. Um, and that's, that's the plan with that. Not a very extensive plan, but hey, nevertheless, a plan. Um, yes. So, that's it for acquisition. I, as I said, I haven't bought much, I just have that. Oh, I do actually have another acquisition, but I can't really show it to you. I ended up, so I have a yarn cake winder, but I didn't have the swift that goes with it because I was like, it seems like a waste. And then I spend most of my time winding balls. It takes me a while because tensioning the yarn correctly to get it, it just wasn't working. Um, so I ended up just buying a cheap one. So I have one of them, so I might be doing 
a few projects that I had that I just haven't been doing because it would involve winding ball, a yarn ball up, I can now do. So I am happy about that. Um, so I think on to general life stuff. Um, I don't actually have anything on needles, as you probably noticed. Um, I'd have to pick up stitches and I'd probably get distracted if I was doing it with the blanket and I, as I said, I'm a bit sort of stuck as to what I'm doing with the festive pullover. I, actually, I, I think that's one of the main things. I want to get like a hat or a sock or something on a set of needles just to have, just to have. So I can just, when I don't want to think, I can just knit something plain. Um, so I'm just going to sit here squishing this basically because, you know. Um, if you're interested, I dyed this myself using red onion skins. Uh, there's a video on it. I will put it in the I card. So, uh, generic life stuff. Um, what have I been up to? Uh, since the month I want to talk to you, I went to Slimbridge, uh, which is in South Gloucestershire. No, it's in Gloucestershire proper, isn't it? It's not actually in South Gloucestershire. Um, and it's a wetlands wildlife sanctuary. And over the winter, uh, I don't know if you're aware, the Brit the wetlands in the UK get a lot of international visitors, birds from sort of cold places, Arctic Circle, Scandinavia, Russia. There's a word that I've completely blanked on that describes that sort of landscape. Um, but from those, and it's lots of swans and ducks that spend the summer in the Arctic and in Arctic sort of areas. Um, because there's often good food and not many predators, but then in the winter it's too cold, so they come to Britain. And Slimbridge is one of the places they come. And normally you would expect, by this point they should have all left, I've not actually been recently, but at the beginning of March they hadn't all left. And I was expecting just to go and see sort of whatever was there, but they still had the Buick Swans, and I do quite like looking at Buick Swans. So the Buick Swans are special, so the normal swan you would see in the UK is the Mute Swan, but the Buick, and I think it's the Hooper, um, come in from overseas over the winter and you have to go to sort of wetland areas to see them. So I saw some Buick swans as well as some of the funky ducks. Um, and in the great tradition of myself, um, every time I see a new bird it basically becomes my favourite bird. And this isn't quite true, but basically if you ask me what my favourite bird is it will be a bird I've seen recently. Like, you know, for ages the blacksmith plover was my favourite bird because I'd been to South Africa recently and I'd seen it. Um, but at the moment, my favourite bird is the pintail duck, because there's just something very elegant about it. So I am likely to end up just embroidering something with a pintail duck on it soon. I might make a video of it, but honestly, with my track record of making videos on embroidery, um, probably not going to happen. But, you know, we'll see. Um, I've also been not just knitting to relax, but I've also been playing some video games. I'd, I'd, yeah, I've been playing a game called Let's Build a Zoo, I think that's what it's called. Great fun. You just build a zoo. I'm having great fun building all of my animals' enclosures and making them weird and wonderful. Um, I particularly enjoy doing stupid things like putting climbing frames in the cow pen. Because cows are known for climbing. But hey, they seem to enjoy it. Um, and TV I've had on in the background. Uh, I've been watching, re-watching Death in Paradise on the BBC iPlayer. It's good fun. I mean, it's a bit stupid and a bit far-fetched and a bit out there, and some of these people's motives are a bit sort of... Huh? Um, but they're sort of locked room mystery style things. So it's, you know, this person has been killed, but how could anybody have done it? Because they were in a locked room. Um, you know, they were in the middle of nowhere. How did they die? So they're good fun. Um, and I spent a lot of the time sort of theorising how the person died. Um... That's it. Oh, I did mention, I think I mentioned last month that my dog was ill. We still don't know what's wrong with her. Lots of tests, lots of vet visits. She's getting better at visiting the vet, which is always nice, but I don't think the blood tests, I don't think she enjoys them. Um, but she's, I think she, she, we still don't know what's wrong with her, which is annoying. But at least the house didn't break in the last month, which was always nice. In fact. Thank you for watching, and if you want to see more videos, then please check out the sort of links at the end of the video and consider subscribing and check out my channel. Um, I put out monthly podcasts and I also put out other content as I mentioned earlier, including shorts if you're interested in that sort of thing. Um, also you can check out my Instagram and Ravelry which are linked below. I'm not very active on there at the moment. I do try to put finished objects on Ravelry but I'm honestly not great at it. Um, but otherwise, thank you for watching and I hope you have a beautiful day.